Hello, everybody. This is the notes for Section 5.5, Advanced Geometry. Um, just had a delicious donut, so I'm ready to go for these notes. So let's get started. Uh, we are talking about inequalities in a triangle. All right, so first, just a quick review about inequalities. Uh, basically, not equal. Okay, so less than, greater than, or sometimes we have the or equal to's. So to solve an inequality, um, basically, you're going to do the same stuff as if it was an equal sign. So we want to get the x term by itself first. So we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. We get 21. Now we want to uh, get the x by itself. So we're going to divide by 3. x is less than 7. And that's solving an inequality. Okay, All the steps are the same as if it was an equal sign. Uh, a lot of times you'd be asked, uh, sometimes, like more than an algebra class, you'd be asked to graph your answer. So if this is 0 and there is 7, you would put an open circle there, and we have x values less than that. Okay, most of the time we're not going to be asked to graph in this class, but that's how it's done. For this one, same idea. I'm going to add 9 to both sides. Uh, so we're going to get 24 greater than a negative 2x. And to solve for x, we're going to divide by negative 2. Now, an important thing with inequalities. Whenever you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you switch the direction of the inequality. It's called changing the sense of the inequality, um, but that's what you do. So this answer, if you read from x, it really says x values greater than negative 12. That's our answer. Okay. Basic idea of inequalities. So, um, relationships between angles and side length, or lengths. Um, it's a very simple idea. There is a much more exact idea. It's called trigonometry, relating angle lengths or angle measurements and side lengths. But right now, it's just a general idea. If you have the biggest angle, across from it is the longest side. Or if you have the smallest angle, across from it would be the shortest side. That's the basic relationship, okay? Um, you know, there's nothing exact about it yet. Like I said, that's trigonometry. We'll get there, or at least part of it. There's a lot of stuff with trigonometry, but we'll get to some of the ideas. So, for this example down here at the bottom, it says put the angles in order from smallest to largest. Go ahead, hit pause, try that. Okay. Um, so, angles, smallest to largest. So, the smallest side is the 6. So like it says above, that means this is the smallest angle, the angle C, across from it. So, from smallest to largest. Angle C is going to be smaller than uh, 7 is the next smallest side. So, across from that is angle B, which is going to be smaller than the largest angle, which is across from the largest side, which is angle A. So, smallest to largest, angle C, angle B, then angle A. That's the idea. We're not saying anything about the specific measurements. It's just that's the order, smallest to largest. Okay, so can you form a triangle with any combination of three side lengths? So hit pause. I want you to try to, uh, if you got a ruler, fantastic. Maybe use centimeters. Um, try to draw a, tr a triangle with those three sides, side lengths. So what I mean by that, first, the first example. Uh, I don't have a ruler here on the smart board, but here is a side that is 6, here is a side that is 5, we'll make that one 4. It's possible to draw that triangle. Try that with the other ones. See what you get. All right. Hopefully you struggle a little bit, but figure it out. For this middle example, 2, 3, and 7, if those are the side lengths, there's the side 7. The side 2 would be about here. The side 3 would be about here. Those don't meet, and they can't meet, even if you laid them flat. There's 2. There's 3. They're never going to intersect. They're just too short. So you can't form a triangle with those side lengths. So that's no good. The same thing should have happened here for the 1, 1, and 3. If this is a side length of 3, 1 is there, 
One is there. They can't meet. No matter how you arrange them, they just can't form a triangle. It's no good. So that leads us to the triangle inequality theorem, which says um, the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is always going to be greater than the length of the third side. So you add up two of the sides, it has to be more than the third side. And you can do any combination, just two sides added up is always going to be more than the third side. So hit pause, copy this down, please. All right. So for an example here, a triangle has one side length of 11 and another length of 6. Describe the possible lengths of that third side. So we really have a couple of options to deal with here. Um, what can we call this third side x? So our possibilities. x is the smallest side. x is the medium side. It's the middle side length. Or x is the largest. So we've got three things to take into account. But going back to that triangle inequality theorem, um, two of the sides add up to be more than the third side. So if x is the smallest side, we could just add it up to, uh, with the other small side, it's got to be greater than the third side. Okay. If x is the medium side length, and I'm going to keep on going with this same idea, x plus 6, the two of the smaller sides, will add up to be more than the biggest side. And in the last example, what if x is the largest? That means the two smallest sides will have to add up to be more than the largest side. Okay, We could do any combination of sides, but uh, or order of the x, the 6, and the 11, but those are the three possibilities. x is the smallest, medium size, or it's the largest. Now, we're just solving for x. So this is the idea of the setup here. Um, to solve for x, subtract 6. x has got to be greater than 5. Uh, here, we're going to do the same, same thing. Subtract 6, x is still greater than 5. Now, notice we're getting the same result here. So, when you do this kind of problem, you don't need to do this one. Really, all you're concerned is, what you got to check is, what if x is the smallest side, and what if x is the largest side? This is where you're going to get your answers from. So, uh, if x is the largest side, the two smaller sides are going to be add up to be greater than that. Well, that's just 17. So again, reading from x, x is less than 17. So, question is, describe the possible lengths of the third side. Well, it's got to be greater than 5, and it's got to be less than 17, anywhere in between. So we could write this as a double inequality. x values greater than 5 less than 17. Any side length in that range. Okay, that's that's the idea of this problem. Um, that's the biggest idea of this section. Uh, you know, this triangle inequality theorem, if you could do any combination of sides, usually, and what we did in that example, is the two smaller sides add up to be greater than the longest side. Um, that's the most common way to look at this. Uh, a lot of textbooks, that's how they define the triangle inequality theorem. I like this better because it, it is true, but how we use it is typically two small sides add up to be greater than the longest side. Okay, uh, when you come to class, we'll have a warm-up problem, a little bit more challenging, and then uh, it is a shortened day because of the assembly. So come on in, just grab the assignment if you're set to go, if you've got some questions on the notes. Write them down now and ask them when you come into class. Have a good night, everybody.